In the eyes of many people, Tibet is a Buddhist holy land that can purify people's souls. Little did we know that Tibet before liberation was a hell-like existence. Tibet at that time was extremely dark and futile. Underage, innocent girls become playthings. Several generations of a family have been trapped in the three major Tibetan. The bottom slaves are oppressed by evil forces. The sunshine in those years never appeared over Tibet at all. Until later, the Party Central Committee liberated Tibet. Only then did the millions of serfs here truly see the light and gain human dignity. So how terrifying is unliberated Tibet? What are the dark facts about Tibet? The first dark fact about Tibet is its brutal punishment. There are two major prisons in Tibet. They are Shoal Prison and Langsisha Prison. The total area of the former is 1,050 square meters. There are five cells on the east side and a scorpion hole on the north side. In order to better punish civilians during the period of the fifth Dalai Lama, those in power moved the Shoal Prison to the outside of the Patala Palace. The prison looks like a simple little stone house. Inside, there are knives for chopping off hands and feet, iron spoons for gouging out holes, and a standing cage called Dongjia. There are more than 20 kinds of torture instruments, including whips, cuffs, and wooden shackles. No one would have thought that there would be such a terrifying cave next to the colorful Patala Palace. People who go in vertically can basically only lie down when they come out, if you can survive the above 20 kinds of punishments. The moment he comes out, he will be immediately pushed into the scorpion hole. Tens of thousands of scorpions will pounce on the prisoner and bite the prisoner's body. In the end, this person only got the tragic end of death with no intact body. Even more unbelievable is the shoal prison in the eyes of those in power. It turned out to be a place full of holy light. It is also the place closest to the gods. It can only be said that while they brainwashed the common people, they also brainwashed themselves. Shoal prison and Langsesha prison have the same purpose. It's just that the location is different. It's directly below the Patala Palace. Before Tibet was liberated, the miserable wailing of humans could be heard here almost all year. It's just that no one dares to refute or save. After all, all the people at the bottom have no power, no money and no knowledge. Even if Tibetan civilians are lucky enough to escape, they will never be able to escape the first Tibetan dark punishment. In the old days, Tibet had a theocracy. The Dalai Lama is the emperor of Tibet. They always like to use religious rituals to realize their inner desires. At that time, Tibetan monks particularly liked to use human bones, human skin and human blood to perform a series of sacrificial activities. They all appear to be eminent monks who have a deep understanding of Buddhism. In fact, they are just beasts who have no regard for human life, especially with the skull of a 16-year-old girl. The ritual vessel Gabala Bowl is the favorite of monks. In addition, they also like to grind the skulls of adult men into large horns and drumsticks. They find it particularly pleasurable to play on this bone instrument, if the above bone products are not enough to highlight their cruelty. You may be surprised by the drum skin made of spiritual boys and girls. Want to make a complete drum head? At least two underage girls are required. Their tongues will be cut out first. Then, when there is a breath of life, feel your skin being peeled off inch by inch. This pain is worse than Ling Chi. What's even more terrifying is that the Dalai Lama refers to these gadgets as magic weapons it is believed that its use in religious ceremonies will have the effect of channeling spirits and warding off evil spirits. Especially a magical weapon like Damaru. It is also defined as a high-level magic weapon that can exercise ghosts and lead directly to hell. Monks perform disgusting sacrifices to satisfy themselves. Every time a Buddhist ritual is held, countless lives are harvested. The third dark fact about Tibet is the serfdom system. Before 1959, as long as you are not born into a family of the three major lords, monks and nobles, then you have to become a serf. In the old days, even had clear hierarchical laws. If you were born into one of the three major lord families above, then you are a superior person. You can beat, scold and execute serfs at will. You can even legally own your own survival resources such as farmland, grassland, cattle and sheep, etc. If you are unfortunate enough to become a serf. According to the code, the price of a superior person's life is the same as the weight of his body in gold. The life of a serf is equivalent to the price of a straw rope. The phrase life is like a piece of grass was used in the old days. The fact that Tibet already exists objectively cannot be washed away. 
In this context, it was normal for serfs to have insufficient food and clothing. What's even more terrifying is that we can't live in a normal house. We still have to pay many types of taxes and fees to the three major lords every year. Under the oppression of the above laws and regulations, the serfs had no future or hope at all. Many of them are getting poorer from generation to generation. Almost all serfs were in debt from birth. The annual tax items will also be increased at will according to the mood of the three major lords. Taxes and fees are official and legal taxes. If the serfs really can't afford it, the three lords will smile again. Introduce various loan methods. These lending methods are commonly known as loan sharks. This system of oppressing serfs made the lords extremely rich. Each of them has their own. A manor covering an area of several thousand square meters. There are hundreds of rooms in the manor. Each room is decorated with luxury. The lords also lived a long life because of this. On the contrary, the lifespan of serfs was extremely short. Most people are less than 40 years old. The fourth feudal aspect of Tibet is the human skin thanka. People who don't understand this period of Tibetan history. You may think that thanka is the first choice for souvenirs. After all, it is expensive and has high value. In the period before Tibet was liberated, almost all thankas are made of human skin. And it's made from the skin of a 16-year-old pure girl. Everyone is very curious why the skin of a 16-year-old girl must be used. The Dalai Lama expressed this in a high-sounding way. The gods only like to chat with 16-year-old girls. At this time, women have not been polluted and their thoughts are relatively pure. Naturally, skin is also the first choice for magic weapons. The girl who is unfortunate enough to be selected will be a whole piece of human skin was peeled off by a skilled skinner. The artist, based on the preferences of the three major lords, often draw pictures of beautiful girls full of pornographic connotations. It can be said that these Tibetan leaders are extremely evil and lustful in their hearts. The Dalai Lama still insists on giving this kind of thing. The noble name Thanka came up. The three major lords are also proud to collect Thankas. Everyone will treasure customized Thankas in secret rooms. The Thankas we see in museums now are made from the skin of 16-year-old girls. Think carefully about why lords like the Dalai Lama. It is important to emphasize that 16-year-old girls, in fact, there are three main reasons. First, their deep-rooted male patriarchy is at work. He feel that only virgins are the cleanest and purest. Secondly, they believe that men do not matter whether they are young or old. They are all turbid to a certain extent, and women are the beings that give birth to life. Definitely closer to the gods and the underworld. The third one they did purely in this cruel way. Establishing one's own hegemonic position is tantamount to a policy of obscuring the people. In any case, these three major lords have vested interests in demons in human skin. Even more terrifying is the fifth dark truth about Tibet. The girl was reduced to a plaything and a burial object. Speaking of Songs and Gampo, the first thing everyone thinks of must be his love story with Princess Wenching. But if you think about it seriously, isn't it a political marriage? Or, we can say more nakedly that Princess Wenching is a victim. She's just a stabilizer that can maintain short-term peace. In fact, Song San Gampo has a very bad character, just like a domestic violence man. After his death, he ordered 5,000 people to be buried with him. The terrible thing is that these people must be girls. Song San Gampo really won't stop even if he's dead. This shows his disregard for human life and his overwhelming lust. Girls are human beings and naturally they won't agree willingly. The official response to this kind of girl with normal thinking. Only use one method to threaten each other. If you don't agree, then you'll be skinned and made into a human thanka. The official meaning is obviously that as long as you are not a girl from one of the three major lord families, you are unfortunately chosen and you will die in the end. It's just death with skin as a burial object or died as a human thanka skinned alive. What can a girl do? Even if they want to commit suicide, they won't have a chance because her family members, who were also serfs, would personally sacrifice them. It can be said that girls were the lowest class of people in Tibet before liberation. Many girls become the playthings of nobles as soon as they turn 13. When they are happy, the nobles will reward them with food and drink. When they are unhappy, they can buy and sell them at any time or marry them directly to beasts as wives. A girl is worth less than a sheep. In short, Tibet in the old days was a hell-like existence. Fortunately, the People's Liberation Army arrived. Only then can these disgusting laws and regulations be abolished.
Only then did the Tibetan people regain their new life. Tibet today can escape from the darkness, feudalism, cruelty, and backwardness of the past.